All right, Harmless Dave here talking about uh, what's going on in the media and what's going on in Canada. Um, this is some crazy good stuff, but there's also some pure evil happening across the northern border. Um, the truckers have done something unprecedented, and it sparked a whole movement around the world. Uh, truck drivers are some of the coolest people on the planet some of the most hardworking people, uh, and most of them are really smart. I don't know if it's because they're uh, riding around listening to uh, talk radio all day, or um, they're getting an education though when they're on the road. And, uh, and just, they're, they're just smart people for the most part. Uh, I've known a few truckers in my lifetime, and um, I know of two currently that uh, one, I think, used to be an acquaintance, and the other one is out on the road doing uh, the Lord's work. Um, it's like a husband and wife team, and they're just fantastic people. Anyway, um, up in Canada, they're just as fantastic, just as amazing people, and um, they have pretty much shut down uh, huge portions of major Canadian cities. But here's what's happening. I got this report last night um, and it goes like this. They are actually keeping supplies from these truckers. They're stealing fuel and they're stealing other supplies. And when I say they, I'm talking about the police and the government up there, the police, okay? Now, <laughs> this is a great argument, libertarians, would be quick. And I, I'm getting more and more in line where they're thinking on the whole back the blue strategy. There are good cops, obviously. But when a dictatorship has a police force, that police force is automatically corrupt because they're going to be following orders. And this is the problem. Police are not taking an oath and following the oath to the Canadian uh, Constitution here in the United States, a lot of times where parents are at a school board meeting and they're not doing anything other than their right to protest, um, the cops come in and, and drag them out. So this is getting like a, a critical mass. It's like you need to look at the police maybe a little differently than you used to look at the police. And again, my libertarian friends are becoming more and more right on this topic. Um, so this is kind of what totalitarianism looks like, right? I mean, what's more totalitarian? The citizens rise up. They don't want mandates anymore. And by the way, there are a lot of countries, I think Sweden just dropped all of their mandates today, and they're actually reporting it on mainstream news. There does seem to be this move towards sanity, right? Or at least closer to sanity. Although... There are a lot of corporations that aren't going to let go because they're so in bed with the government. The government is saying, you guys need to continue to enforce these draconian measures um, in order to get tax breaks. I mean, the whole thing right now is a combination of state and corporate power just merging. I keep talking about this. For those of you who you know look at, and again, this is maybe more libertarian than not, but, you know, it's a private company, but it's not a private company. So I think a lot of libertarians understand that now. But um, there are some, like in D.C., right, who are part of that entire class. And they might as well be on the left. They, they, what are they libertarian on? You know, yeah, legalized drugs. OK, great. And, and I don't have a problem with that so long as there is a way to, you know, monitor things a little bit. And I know that's government control. But I mean, you just have to look out for public safety and all that. And that's another argument. I don't want to go down that road on this. I want to talk about the truckers because um, the revolution that they started is unprecedented. Uh, and the way they went about doing it makes it really hard for everyone to go in there and dismantle it. But the Canadians are talking about it. They're not going to this. Look, Klaus Schwab, all of these people have so much money invested in uh, little Trudeau. They have so much money and, and he has to come out with 
incredibly just, I don't know, Orwellian lines about how these guys are racist and fascist. And I'm like, huh? All they do is drive their truck all day. I mean, they're, and by the way, these are the last guys who need mandates, right? They're alone for a good portion of their day, right? They're driving for a good portion. If anything, they've, they're the original social distancers and uh, sheltering in place to some degree, although they're moving, but they're sheltering, you know, for very long periods of time. So these people are a little bit out of their mind when they look at what the truckers are the problem. They're the super spreaders. Okay. You know, so I'm really impressed with um, the Canadians and what they're doing. And then the people are coming out too. There are so many working class blue collar Canadians out there and they're putting a lot of um, the American population to shame. And uh, it's sad, but I know I know there is a huge uh, contingency of truckers here in the United States that maybe they're just afraid we're in such a weird time where they threaten, you know, parents who go to school board meetings and people who speak out and people that don't want to like go along with this never ending narrative you know it's like when does this end and there are states i think up in oregon they said this is never going to end this is going to be our way of life going forward and see what that does is it isolates a state like oregon away from the rest of the states and eventually this country has to kind of come to grips with the fact that we need to break up <laughs> it's a relationship that has run its course we need DC to just go away. We need to decentralize all of the power and bring it back to the people, back to the states, but specifically to the people where the states have authority, but they leave the people alone for the most part. And they cut red tape and they cut regulations. By the way, we need an entirely new healthcare system based on holistic medicine, based on actually treating the cause rather than trying to placate the symptoms later on. I mean, look, um, people did this as much as they were going to do this. And as more information came out, even the people that did it, a lot of them are like, okay, I did it once, not doing it a second time, or I did it twice, I'm not doing it a third time. As more information comes out, by the way, this is all information that's censored but the truckers, they're not, they know, again, talk radio, podcasts, whatever they've got going on in the truck, they've got <laughs> better information and they can see they're trying so hard to, to herd everybody to the major news networks, like the legacy dinosaur media. They're trying so hard to do that. You'll pick up your phone and there'll be a headline NBC News says today that blah 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 and you're just like no I don't care about NBC News thank you slide that off of there anyway these Canadians are awesome these truckers are awesome the truck culture is awesome it's like the biker culture I mean it's just these are good people that want freedom I mean when you're on the open road driving whatever but you've got an 18 wheeler you got a big rig or you got a, a Harley. I mean, that's got to be an amazing feeling. Two experiences I've never had. So if you're a trucker, you want to come by and take me uh, across country, I'd have to get permission from the wife, but I'd be up for that. That'd be a cool trip. Anyway, folks, um, support this. They went from, I think they went from, what is that one? GoFundMe to Give, Send, Go. I think they, they lost like millions of dollars. Imagine the government confiscating that, that that's the ultimate in tyranny. If they did that, I mean, totalitarianism, tyranny, yeah, we're just gonna pretend you guys don't exist, just like they did with the health rally a few weeks ago, that didn't happen. No, you didn't have lefties and righties coming together. No, that didn't actually happen. These people are just evil. And they keep putting that narrative out there every day. So those of you with rabbit ears on your TV, right, or the the little HD antenna, whatever it is that they made you purchase, and they switched everything over a few years back. You guys, all you know 
all you know out there is what these uh, media fools are telling you each and every day. And it's discouraging, it's depressing because you wanna shout at people. You can tell when you're walking down the street who's, who's had the brainwash and who's uh, awake to what the brainwash is trying to do to people, right? You, you know, you just know, and um, it's sad and you try to be diplomatic, but at some point we've got to all kind of start shaking people, not literally people just like, hey, you know, do you understand what's going on? At least plant a seed. They may not, you know, react to that seed for quite a long time. Plant the seed and say, hey, do you know what's going on up in Canada? No, I haven't heard. Well, there are a couple of news outlets that covered it, but again, it's anti this, anti that. They're horrible people. No, they're the people that make your supply chain possible. They're the least horrible people on the planet. Um, and they seem to be some of the nicest people in general that you'll ever meet. Um, I watched a little bit of footage from a protest in Canada. They were literally, this isn't a joke. They were singing, we are the world and they were dancing in a circle. <laughs> that is so violent. That's, that's uh, so off the hook. These are the people you've got to make sure you put your kids inside the house and don't come out until they, they go away because they're obviously an ever present danger. <sighs> so again, another day in opposite day land. That's what this is. It's always opposite day when you turn on the news or at least the mainstream news. But this, this is what I like to see. More of this coming hopefully to an American city, like imagine doing this in Washington DC or New York City where they have these mandates that I don't think they're ever gonna get rid of. Yeah, that's where I would send the trucks. <laughs> and you could really, you could definitely mess up New York City pretty quickly. All right, that's my video. You know, you don't have to agree with, um, you know, blockading a city. You don't have to agree with me on that. But um, I'm really enjoying this. I I'm not going to lie to you. I think this is a, a really big and very cool development.